So let's go on the beat. Brought to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com and talk about all that's happened over the last 31 days with our guy, Josh Schrock. Okay. A slow month. March seemed like it was a really, really good month for the Bears. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. I think when you just look at the free agency acquisitions, Lawrence, I think a lot of people were very critical of what Ryan Poles did and kind of worked around the edges, but free agency is not where you want to invest a lot of money. That's where you fill, you patch over roster rolls, right? They added depth, love the center signings, and I think the Keenan Allen thing that caught the Bears by surprise, that's a big thing, right? They reached out to Mike Williams and were like, hey, come in for a visit. We want to check out the knee. He was on vacation. He was in Paris. So they're like, cool, we'll wait for you to get back. Keenan Allen becomes available. It's a quick turnaround for a fourth-round pick. And all of a sudden, Mike Williams is jet-setting back sooner to meet with other teams. The Bears get a better receiver. So I think everything worked out as well as it possibly could have. Did the Bears turn down a slightly more valuable pick for Justin Fields? That's debatable. I was told it was similar compensation, just a different year. But they cleared the deck for Caleb Williams. Everything lines up. And I think this is much in the way we looked at the day that Allen Williams resigned as the day that defined the 2023 season. This might start to define the 2024 season. I know that we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but there was also like this lifting of of a boulder off the shoulder of the Bears with the trade of Justin Fields. It felt like now everyone could kind of have some fun with the idea of Caleb Williams being this team's quarterback. Yeah, yeah. I think that the Justin Fields thing was not ever a realistic discussion inside the walls of Hallis Hall. I think when you talk contract, you talk pass efficiency, you talk durability, you talk just how hard it is to evaluate what he is, what his ceiling is. They were going to move on, but I think the outside noise of debating, hey, and then what, what do you do, right? How, how do you do right by him, right by your team? That's a lot for Ryan Pools to weigh, knowing how important Justin is to the locker room, the fan base, everything he gave the team. And I think just finally getting that done really allowed Ryan to kind of exhale and be like, hey, everything's really worked out. When I sat down and talked to Ryan, the one thing he said was he thinks about how everything's lined up and what it could be like if it hadn't, right? If the Texans don't win that game in 2022 and if the Panthers don't go 3-14 and 14 or 2-15, and 15, right? They're in a good place, but it could, be, it could be worse. Let's get that statue built for Lovey, by the way, and whatever <laughs> this new thing on the lakefront is going to be if it happens. Now, Josh... Help me out with this because sure. I'm trying to do the math on it. Yeah. You have a new quarterback probably coming in yeah. who comes in with a lot of hype. We know that he's great in front of the camera from what he has done mm-hmm. in his career with commercials, yeah. right? Yeah. You have the charter franchise of the NFL. Yeah. I could write the opening scene of Hard Knocks. <laughs> myself yeah. I could I could write it and I'm terrible right so explain this to me <laughs> why do the Bears mm-hmm. not want to be on hard knocks uh, I think the easiest explanation is probably the simplest one and that's that George McCaskey is very passionate about this franchise but also very aware of the optics of everything that goes on at Hallis Hall and the more cameras are around Lawrence the more opportunities there are for embarrassment whether that be internal family dynamics that be You know, Matty Rufus is not the most eloquent man in front of a camera. He might be very good as a defensive coach. He's not the best speaker. It's not John Gruden up there pounding the table saying the autumn wind is a raider, right? That that might not play well. So I think George McCaskey is just very, very aware of everything that goes on and how it could look if something is is on camera they doesn't want now the bears would get final cut right so that's of course so that that's the thing where you're like yeah i understand but you get final cut so if there's something you don't like it can it, just it, be it, gone it, it goes it goes away Leo schreiber i can i can right. hear his voice going yeah. the sun rises at 1920 football drive like i can yeah, i can no. hear it i agree with you i think it'd be awesome right Let, especially at this moment in in bears history I, where everything you have this groundswell of momentum and the bears are should be a playoff team next year with the best quarterback they've probably ever had. Yeah, and that, that'll be their way out of hard knocks <laughs> right, next year. Exactly. Or they'll fire Flues, and that'll be their way out of hard knocks next year. <laughs> I hope they do it, but I get why they probably wouldn't. I've been thinking about this because a lot of stuff has already kind of fallen into place, yeah. and the defense doesn't need a ton of help. Sure. Like, they're pretty loaded. The yeah. linebackers played well last year. Montez Sweat made a real difference. The back four slash five is incredible. Yeah. Here's what I'm thinking. What do they need more for Montez Sweat? Does he need a partner on the other side, yeah. or does he need a three technique in the middle? I would say three technique in the middle. I would say that – Montez Sweat, what we saw last year is that he his presence makes whoever's on the opposite side 
that much better. I think you can get away with Demarcus Walker, and maybe you find a free agent for cheap right right before camp. Maybe you get Yannick Ngakwe back at half or two-thirds of the money. You get a Kyle Van Noy. But if you get a guy, maybe it's Jervon Dexter. Maybe he takes the lead. Maybe it's Byron Murphy out of Texas. But a guy who's right next to Sweat who can impact the quarterback like that and take some of the pressure. Like So you, you can't slide the line to two guys on the same side, right? So you're going to leave someone with a one-on-one. I think that will help Montez more than, say, getting, what, Dallas Turner at nine. Are you still high on Dexter's ceiling? Yeah, I am. I thought he showed a lot of improvement last year, but I, I, I just – I think that – It big, feels like he's still out of position, right? He is. Like, yeah, he, he is. I think they're still tinkering with it. He's still big. The pad level needs work, right? They, they reached, right? They reached on traits. They reached on Raz and didn't mm-hmm. really – look. they looked at the tape and they thought, eh, eh, we can, we can work around it. And maybe he's rotational and good, but I don't think he's ever going to be – Great, great, which is what they want. And he got better as the season went on. He did, yeah. On. I thought the last five, six games, he was, re- he was pretty, he was really impactful. But they need someone else to fill the Justin Jones role after he gets $30 million from the Cardinals. No, no doubt about it. Caleb Williams is in town this week. Yeah. Welcome. What, what, in the, what is it that will happen now? When we talk about these, these top 30 meetings yeah. that teams have, yeah. what goes on inside of those? Yeah, so first they're going to get the medicals, right? That's the big thing. The Bears are not worried about his medicals. They have scouts who log every injury these top prospects ever have. Caleb's had a hamstring strain that he played through. That's it. So they're not worried about that. And then next is they're just going to keep putting him on the board, right? Keep installing. When I talked to Ryan Poles, he said the big thing is they want to see – How, because in college there's no headset, right? How does Caleb hear the play call, digest it, recall it, and then relay it in the huddle? And that's the big thing. They're doing a lot of work on that. And then just how does he treat people, right? It's still the character stuff. How do you treat people around the building? How do you interact with Shane Waldron, with Chris Morgan, with everyone? But those are very small boxes to check. Like, we're we're pretty much all the way there. And there's so much talk about the Notre Dame game and why that's this massive red flag. You know, internally, the Bears were there. Ryan was there. They had a bunch of scouts there. They saw it as a bonus. Right, because they know how he's going to react to adversity now. And they saw great body language through three picks, goes to the sideline each time, no soaking. Hey, guys, come to me. Let's figure this out. And the thing about that game is, Lawrence, that defensive game plan the Bears noticed, Notre Dame had never done that before. So that's a sign of this guy's a game changer that Mark Struman said, hey, we're taking 10 days to show him something we've never shown before. With all of the hype about Caleb and when it comes to him being a star, like this is, this is the first star quarterback of the NIL era. Yeah. From what I'm told, and, and if I'm wrong, please, your reporting is definitely stronger than mine. Mm-hmm. I'm told that the meeting at the Combine was all business. Yep. That, that there wasn't any of, like, he didn't want to do putt-putt. Nope. Like, he wanted to get on the board. He wanted to talk with them about Is that what you're hearing, too? Yep. Nope. Yeah, that was the 15 minutes of the Combine. There was no putt-putt. There were no darts. It was all business. We're right on the board. We're recall. We're football. We're talking ball for 15 minutes. We're getting to know everyone. And I thought it was funny, George McCaskey, you know, he's in all the meetings. He makes it very clear. He doesn't talk, doesn't ask any questions. But his thing was, it was 1040 at night and Caleb was lively and talking, chatting everyone up. And the recall was like that. And he was very impressed. Okay, good. Those are all good things to know. And this is a good person to know. Josh Schrock, our Bears insider, giving you the latest on what's going on with your football team. Congrats. You finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.